Uh, yes, good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, my son has been held in solitary confinement going on 13, almost 13 years now. He did spend 10 of those years, though, in Corcoran State Prison solitary confinement, and then he was transferred about two and a half years ago to Pelican Bay. And my son is, um, you know, a self-proclaimed jailhouse lawyer. He has studied in civil, lit civil litigation, paralegal studies and such. And what I have found through this organization that we've now founded is that numerous prisoners um, that are housed in the solitary confinement unit are actually uh, jailhouse lawyers, as you would say, um, that are knowledgeable in the law, that um, utilize the appellate process that Terry Thornton herself was talking about that they have within the prison system. And this appellate process that she was also speaking of, you're not even legally entitled to enter into the courts until you've exhausted the system within, which means filing numerous levels of appeals and being heard by their same officers, so oftentimes they're delayed or um, they're, they're actually denied, and, you, you know, you just have to keep going through this until you've exa exhausted that whole system. And for me, since my son has been transferred to Pelican Bay State Prison, um, it's been hard. It's been really hard because, of course, you have society that says, you know, who cares about the prisoner and let them die in there, and and then you have a system that was designed to create to create, you know, um, suicidal tendencies or or to go insane, and and I think that. Um, you know, Dr. Patterson's report says it all in his 354-page report, where he lists 34 suicides throughout the year of 2011 that all took place in solitary confinement, in either the Administrative Segregation Housing Unit or the Security Housing Unit, and this is where my son is housed. My son is housed maybe in a cell where the prisoner there before him might have took his own life or went mad. You know, my son is housed in a cell that, just as Jules Lobe Lobel was saying, there is no window. You don't know when day transitions into night. You just go by the food tray that they slide you, if it's a breakfast tray or a dinner tray. And to know that even their yard, um, it just exists of another cell. They bring them out and they put them in another cell surrounded by 20 feet brick walls and the sky covering covered in plexiglass. And I think, for me, that is just the most troubling that I feel myself at times as if I'm buried alive, as I feel myself that I wake up in the night and I can't breathe and I have anxiety because I just imagine what it's like to be entombed day in and day out in a cement cell like that. Dolores, when Not was just... the last time that John saw natural light? Uh, it was on the bus ride. It was about uh, two and a half years ago uh, when he was transferred from the Corcoran to um, Pelican and Bay. And why is he in solitary confinement? He is there. It's not for any rules violations report, as Mr. Lobel was referring to. It's the it's the they use a, a system of things like they could use a drawing. They use other prisoner statements against them. Um, you know, their name could be in a note. They didn't even have to have the note. Somebody else might have had a note, and they said their name's in it. It's things like that. It's an accumulation of uh, things like that. How do you know he's on hunger strike? Well, I went to go see him the 4th of July weekend, and, um, you know, I was very emotional because I knew that July 8th they were going to start a, a third hunger strike now. And, and I just, you know, I, I was— I was just asking him, you know, please not to do it, or maybe just to do it for two or three days. You know, you just, you don't want to see your loved one go through this. And he looked at me and he said, Mom, I like to eat. He said, you know, he said, I love food. And then he said, but we've been in the courts, we've used our 602, there's been litigation, you know, going all the way back to the Castillo versus Alameda case. And, and he said, can you tell us another option? Can you tell us what we can do that would make a difference, that, you know, to change things? He says, because if you have a better solution, I'd love to hear it. And I sat there and I just stared because what we hear over and over with our organization is we get letters that the, that the men are still going to their committee reviews to be reviewed, to be released. And that IGI is still saying, oh, you have a drawing, or we just searched your cell and your name was in a note, or, you know, you had another prisoner's name, or things like that, and they're saying, you know, to be retained for the next um, six-year review. So it does seem that, um, you know, they, they are still using the same process.